the good game was yeah. uh, Nolan Ryan's baseball. I agree. But, like, you could cheat the computer so hard in that game. <laughs> I don't know anybody else who had that game. Yeah, everybody had Ken Griffey's baseball. If anybody has ever played Nolan Ryan's baseball, please leave a comment down below. And there's got to be a way to play it over again. I don't know what it was, man. I mean, what made it? What made that game special? I mean, it was our it was our baseball game. It was super intuitive. Like the controls, it's like you point to the base and throw it to the base. There's only like three buttons, you know. When you look at a baseball game now today, they got baseball games today where um, you can log on and it'll update the roster and the entire game situation for a game that's happening in real life. It'll be like, oh, there's two outs, these two teams are playing, this pitcher's already out, like all that stuff. And then you can jump in the game and play it for the rest of the game. And there's like, you got all kinds of buttons and stuff. No, this was like three buttons and the D-pad. <laughs> and, like, and that was it. It's just like super intuitive, you know? Mm. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. And then um, what I liked about it was the – weren't all the players Japanese? Uh, I don't think so. Wasn't it like Japan versus American superstars or something supposed to be? No, no. Nolan Ryan's baseball was like the the blue team and the red team. And it they looked – they were color schemes of like actual teams, you know. But yeah. And then it would be like for the names, it would be like B. Brown or something. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't actual like people's names. Right, 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 right. right. I'm sure there was a Japanese version of the game though. Yeah, Nolan Ryan was the only damn like – Celebrity in the damn game. Yeah, and he was on the T team. You remember that? I guess so. Uh, yeah. Like whenever we logged on, we were like race our things over to pick the T team first because you couldn't be two of the same team, and we knew yeah. he was like the best pitcher. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, now I remember. Yeah. Oh yeah, though the best part, dude, was there was no time limit on the freaking. If you wanted to like lead off the bag, you could just <laughs> go for ten minutes, or just, or just like. You know, like, you know, you know, yeah, like a two hour game of pickle. We'd have like a tent, we'd have like a, a two hour standoff in the garage, dude. Like, <laughs> wait for somebody to blink so you can freaking slide into home plate and score the winning run. Oh man, that was crazy, dude. Yeah, that was a good. Yeah, because remember you, the way that the way to reset the was to get to the pitcher's mound. Yeah. And you got to stay there for like a split second. Yeah. But if it's anything less than a split second, you have the option to walk off the mound and throw the ball to the base. Yo, do you remember how frustrating it was? The question I have, the question I have for the designers of that game or who has, who's ever played it, you think it was intentionally like set up that way to have those little unique quirks in it where the timing just works out perfectly if you do this or do this or don't react? I mean, do you all think that or do you think it was just a kind of a byproduct of it? What do you think? I'd say it's a byproduct, like a glitch kind of thing that you could definitely like expose. But yo, my question to you is. On a scale of one to ten, how frustrating was it when you would throw it to a base and the person who was supposed to be on the base was like running to the base at the same time? And same thing as a pitcher's mound. If they were like a millisecond away from being on the base, the ball would just go right through them and like go to the outfield. <laughs> and then everybody just run the bases. <laughs> like that's the most frustrating thing. 